Hey guys, my name is Blaze and welcome to another video tutorial for Code Bytes. And again, we're going to be in Game Maker for this one. And what we're going to actually do, this one was actually requested uh, for me to, to show you guys. And what this one actually is, is sequential attacks. And what that basically is, is we've got one attack key, but we have maybe three, four, five, depending on how you're designing your game. Uh, up to whatever number you want different animations, but we're using the same key So I did a previous video on this. I called it one button combos, which is up there in the uh, Card section above, but it's also down in the description below um, But that's apparently wrong. What it actually is is they're actually supposed to be sequential attacks So here we go one two Three and it plays a different sprite every single time one two three and one two three now I showed you guys uh, right up and down but with the way that I actually wrote this uh, version up I've actually flipped uh, the right image so that I can have left so if I press the attack key you see that the numbers are backwards but what's actually important is what you guys get out of this video tutorial so obviously here I'm only using three directions essentially but if you have four directions then obviously you change the code a little bit to have uh, four directions four separate directions and if you're doing eight obviously you would have that uh, different again to have eight different directions so you have one you know up left up uh, up right uh, up up left left down left down and down right right so the way that uh, you're programming this would obviously change depending on your project but if you are following my tutorial specifically, then this is the way that uh, I'm doing it. So one, two, three, and then it resets again. Uh, one, two, three. Simple and uh, really, when uh, this was requested by one of you guys, uh, I thought it was going to be a bit of a challenge. Turns out uh, the solution for it is a lot more simple than I thought. Let me show you guys exactly what that looks like. But before I do, actually, I'm going to go into preferences, windows, um, no, not windows. I'm going to go to scripts, font, make sure that my size is 14, which it already is apparently. And we're going to go from there. <clears throat> um, and then we're going to go, what you're going to need for this tutorial are macros. So at this stage, if you guys are hearing any background audio, it's because uh, my roommate's actually watching a movie right now. And so you might hear something. Don't worry, guys. Uh, just keep your focus on me so, <laughs> while I teach you guys. Um, but anyway, here we go. We have a uh, few macros that we're going to need. You're going to need macros for each of your directions. So for me, I'm only using three. You might have four or, you know, eight. Um, just make sure that you have your directional macros and of course an attack macro so for me I'm using light attack whatever your macro name is um, then you'll have that so again one more time you'll need directional macros and an attack macro uh, because I'm sharing this with a whole bunch of other uh, of the code bite tutorial videos that um, I've got a whole bunch of other things that's not relevant for this one but don't worry, um, as long as you are paying attention, uh, you should be fine. So for me, <clears throat> I'm using four, but I'm sort of flipping that value left and right. So that's why I only have uh, three directions instead of four. Now, what is a macro? There are going to be some people that will ask what a macro is. A macro, I guess in simple language, is a variable that you can't change the value of. It's always going to contain that amount. So that's it. That's really all a macro is. It's a value. You can't change it unless you change it here in the macros section. So something to let you guys in on that. Uh, what we're, what else are we going to need? You're going to also need sprites, obviously, your sequential attacking sprites. So let me give you an example of that using my horizontal attack. So my left, right attacks. I've got three. Now again, you can have any number of these that you want. Um, the, it's all up to you. It's how you're designing your game, obviously. I'm not doing everything for you. I'm just giving you guys the tools and the knowledge to be able to make your own games um, 
without me having to hold your hand the entire way. Otherwise, we'll have like hundreds of games with the exact same code, the exact same features. What I want to give you guys instead is the means to be able to make your game unique from other people. So that's the whole uh, point of this tutorial series or these videos that I'm making for Code Bytes. Now, if we have a look here at attack zero, we have the one, obviously. And then we have here for attack one, we have two. And then we have for attack two, we have three. Why have I named them zero instead of one, two, and three? Why have I named it zero, one, and two? Remember, with computer numbers, everything starts from zero. And so just to make it easier for myself when it comes to actually assigning everything, um, it's a lot easier for me to follow. So I have three. You might have more than that. You might have fewer than that. The whole point is that you are, you should be able to, by the end of this video, uh, be able to create your own version of that. Now I've also got uh, attacking sprites for both up and down. But again, I don't have a left one because I'm just flipping the image. Now what you're actually going to need is your object, obviously. And you need a way to keep count of where you are in your sequence of attacks. What I've used here is uh, the variable combo count. I realized actually, uh, or someone mentioned it to me, that I shouldn't be using combo count, it should be sequence. But I've already, I'd already finished writing this out for you guys, so unfortunately I'm not going to go and change it. Uh, just make sure, I'm just letting you guys know that uh, it's sequence, not uh, combo. Uh, so with combo count, just imagine that's the sequence. Next we have these um, arrays, one dimensional arrays, because they only take one value. And again, they have the size of the array is the same as the number of sprites that I want to play, right? So or which uh, sprites I want to play. So for example, for me, I have three sprites, so I just need zero, one, and two. Uh, if you guys say have uh, five or more than that, or if you have fewer than that, then or like if you have two, if you have more than one uh, attack animation, you basically need to take a similar approach to this. Um, so you make a you make one for each and every single direction that you've got. So for me, I'm only using four directions, or in this case, just three. Uh, I have my left and right sequence. I have my up sequence and my down sequence, and each one of these are numbered the same. Um, they're each going to change based on the combo count. More on that in a second. Then we have the actual setup for our two dimensional arrays. If you haven't seen my tutorial on setting up two dimensional arrays and how they work, then I have a tutorial on that. I did one a few weeks back. Um, that's again in the card section above or in the description below. What, we're, what we are gonna focus on today is the actual direction plus the attack. Now, for you guys, you're probably wondering why I've set a default value. Why haven't I gone ahead and set a value here from, say, H combo, uh, set combo count? Because that's how we're setting it up. Um, I've actually just completely forgotten to do that. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you guys, I forgot to actually change that. Um, but these are the default values that we want to set. <clears throat> now, if we have it set to here and we're changing it based on the combo count, we can't obviously do that because we're only going to be in the uh, create event. It sets it there. What we need to do is as we attack, as we press the attack key, we need to change the value. So how do we do that? It's quite simple. In uh, your, in my case, I have it in the state ready um, state machine. And if you have seen my melee tutorial, again, card section above, description below, um, I have it here. I have it set up here. Now what I'm doing here is when we press the attack key, which in this case is the shift key, we will reset the image uh, of the current sprite back to the beginning. And depending on which uh, direction we're facing, we are going to change our sprite. Okay, so depending on which direction we're facing and which number we are in terms of combo count, we will change our sprite. So for example, if we are going left or right, 
and we press the shift key, we will play whatever number combo count is. Okay, so let's say it's at zero, then combo count will play zero sprite. If it's at one, then it will play one. And if it's at two, it will play two. Now, obviously, if we don't have a way to change that or to reset it, it's going to keep going up and up and up and it won't play any other sprites. So how do we do that? In the begin step, I actually have a check here. If our combo count is greater than two, which is basically the size of the array, then we're going to reset it back down to zero. But I haven't shown you any way here that we can actually increase our combo count value. Where I've actually put it is in the animation end event. So let me just get rid of all these other scripts. In the animation end event, after you've actually played the animation and you've finished your attack, that's when the combo count will actually increase by one. The plus plus is a, a short way of writing plus equals one, okay? That's just to let you guys know. But it will increase by one. And it will only run one time because it's, you know, it's right at the end of the animation event. And it's actually before we go back to the state ready. <clears throat> and that's it. That's really all it is. What might confuse you guys actually here in the state ready event is this symbol here, which is the at symbol. In game maker language, it's, uh, we, it's called an accessor. And what accessors do is, it tells this piece of code here, this section here, to change its value. What would happen if I didn't have that at symbol, right? Is it would create a new version of the these sprites here, these forward and light attack sprites here based off of that. We don't want to do that, okay? We've already reserved memory for those sprites. What we want to do instead is actually change them. Okay, so basically, in short, what accessors do is it allows you to change a certain part of code without, or rather, a certain value in, say, an array, and it actually doesn't make a copy of it. So you're not wasting memory creating copies of the same thing. You're just changing the value of something that's already been done. Think about it like this. This whole thing here, on the left side is a variable. What we're doing is we want to change the value of that variable to be this. And in the case of using one dimensional or two dimensional arrays, the way to do that, the way to actually turn it into a variable of sorts is by using accessors. And that's exactly what you need to do. So hopefully you guys understood all that. I've been talking for close to 15 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them because I know that this will be confusing for some people. Uh, so ask away. I don't, I really don't mind, uh, answering your questions. What I will do for you guys though is I will make another video that uses an alternate method, but will give you the same results. Okay. So that I'll probably post that tomorrow. Um, but, if you're not confident or if you don't fully understand this method, then I will show you guys that other one tomorrow. Okay. So I guess if you learn something, we'll end up here. We'll, we'll finish here. If you guys have learned anything, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel because I've got other things lined up, not just tutorials for 2017. And of course, I could appreciate it if you gave me any feedback so I can improve my videos and by all means, do share and ask questions if you are confused. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. I'll see you all later. Bye.